I'm Kevin Cirilli, Chief Washington Correspondent for Bloomberg Television and for Bloomberg Radio. We are joined now by Meg Whitman, who spoke at last week's virtual Democratic National Convention and endorsed none other than Joe Biden. Thank you so much for joining us. Why did you make that endorsement? Well, it, you know, what's probably people surprises people is I'm actually a Republican. I ran for governor of California as a Republican in 2010. So that's probably what surprises a lot of people. But as a longtime business leader, I looked at the situation and I said, you know what? The number one thing we have to do to get the economy going again is to solve the COVID crisis. And I think we would all agree that the way President Trump has handled COVID is not optimal. We've had a couple of different waves. We're still in the midst of this five months in, and it looks like it's going to be a lot longer. So first, I think Joe Biden's going to do a much better job of handling COVID. And then I really like Joe Biden's plan. It's really three part. One is what he calls make it in America, revitalize manufacturing of older industries, but importantly, the next generation of industries, innovate in America. He's got a $300 billion investment in R&D by the government, which I think is crucial. And then finally, recapture the supply chains. You know, we have outsourced a lot of our crucial supply chains, whether it's medicines, medical technology, consumer electronics, semiconductors, which for national security and economic reasons we, re we shouldn't do. So I got a lot of confidence in him. You know, I, I want to take it back to the first part of that, Meg, because when it comes to manufacturing, there was a slowdown even predating this global pandemic. What specific structural changes needs to be developed in order to provide some manufacturing jobs for parts of this country that, quite frankly, are being pummeled as a result of this downturn? Yeah. Well, first of all, the downturn because of COVID is until you solve the medical challenges here, I think it's very hard to bring the country out. But listen, what we have to do is we have to have an eye on the future as a country. There are huge growing industries that have great middle class and even blue collar jobs in AI, robotics, biotech, you name it, clean energy. These are super important that we are the leaders in that. And I'll give you a perfect example. You know, we lost precision manufacturing to Germany. Labor costs are not lower in Germany. We should own precision manufacturing, but we didn't. And that's, I think, because we don't have a great industrial policy. We don't have the right incentives. And frankly, we need an apprenticeship program that trains people to go to work in these industries. Well, you know, there's so much of the economy now interconnected, and the president has taken an aggressive stance as it relates to trade policies and acting tariffs around the world. You specifically mentioned Germany. Meanwhile, you've got a trade war brewing and mounting tensions between the United States and China. How would a Biden administration balance that trade while also protecting the American worker? Yeah. Well, let's first talk about China. So listen, Trump has had rhetoric around what he was going to try to do to China. And I think everyone in business agrees the level, the playing field needs to be leveled, right? You know, let's think about it. Just look at, you know, TikTok. People ask me about it all the time. Well, yes, I think we have to be very concerned about security and data privacy. But China has also banned virtually every American digital platform in China. So the playing field is not level. Joe is all over that. He understands it. And, but here's what you need to do, I think, with um, tariffs and trade generally. You need to be incredibly consistent in your policy. You need to be incredibly consistent with the leaders. You know, one day Trump loves Xi, the next day he doesn't like Xi. You've got to be consistent. And then I don't think you negotiate with, um, uh, you know, international powers in the media. You do it so that there is an agreement that comes together that both sides can say they got something out of. And so you know, I think I it's a different approach. You know, let me, let me follow up on that because th this is fascinating. I mean, you come from the business sector and what you're saying is that these types of negotiations ought to happen one-on-one -on -one and not uh, via social media. Why is that important? Why, does that, why do you think that would be a better approach in, in a Biden administration? Well, I actually think it's not necessarily one-on-one, -on -one, although, although that relationship is important. It's team to team. You have to have a, a, a team of incredible subject matter experts and great negotiators around you. And those discussions need to take place because there's always give and take. One of my favorite expressions is perfect is the enemy of really good. And so everyone has to give a little to get someplace. And I think most people want to, and I know the Chinese, you know, you want to be proud. You want to save face. And I think if you are negotiating um, on social media, the broader media, it doesn't allow the, the negotiating partner to, to, uh, to, to come to an agreement because they're so afraid of being shamed. To take it back to, to last week at the convention, you know, in, in covering the convention, I was struck by, by how the, the, the range in ideological uh, voices that were, that were speaking at the convention. It, does it give you pause or concern at all 
to, to see some very far left democratic socialists that might have a President Biden's ear and that might take the economy in a different direction than quite honestly that you would like to see it go in. So here's what I know about Joe. He is very smart and he listens to a wide variety of people. He builds a coalition, but he listens to a very wide variety of people and then decides what direction he's going to go. And what I really admire about him is his ability. He is a legislator. He knows how Washington works. He knows how to bring people together to get things done. And if I had to boil it all down, that's what the country really needs right now. Someone who could bring us together and get things done. And I think knowing your way around Washington is super important. You know, I mentioned I ran for governor of California as a Republican. One of my platforms was run the government a little bit more like a business. Well, that's not entirely wrong, but I will tell you there is real domain expertise about bringing people together and getting them to a common point of view. And that's what I think he will really bring to this country and it is so sorely needed. We've got to come together about what's the next generation stimulus package? How are we going to bring supply chains back? How are we going to bring um, you know, relief for small business? We've got to get moving and we've got to do it faster and in, in building a broad coalition. Well, let me ask you about that next round of economic stimulus, because uh, I know you've been so generous with your time, and this is the final topic that I want to touch upon, because so many small businesses right now just really in dire need of some financial assistance, uh, and they're having to make some incredibly difficult choices. Look none other than the Gulf Coast, where uh, the, uh, the energy sector and, and refinery workers are having to, dis having to evacuate uh, and also respect the virus. So what needs to be done? Do you think the hurricane is going to put some pressure on Washington, D.C. to get to a bipartisan deal? Well, I hope so. I hope Washington gets to a bipartisan deal because Main Street is really hurting. There's 25 million people unemployed in the country right now. 57 million people have implied, employed for, uh, applied for, un for unemployment insurance. Can you imagine? And so while I don't love deficit spending, and by the way, Trump did a lot of deficit spending before uh, COVID. He's not a fiscal conservative, honestly. But I think the needs of middle class, small businesses, people, look at the um, standing in line for the food banks. I mean, we have a very serious situation on our hands. And I hope Washington will rally to get something done for the American people. And I know if we have to wait until Joe Biden is president, he will make that happen. 